Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you about the short side of margin trading. Now, this side um, borrows stock, sells that stock short high to cover low to generate capital gains on stock price depression playing the bear. Now, remember I told you that on any side of the margin account where equity is increasing, you're making money. And when do we hope that um, we'll make money on the short side? When stock prices go down, your equity will go up. Any price that you cover below the price of the stock sold short, are you with me so far? Uh, you'll cover it with a profit. The bear is showing its prowess. Bear dance that I showed some people not too long ago last week. I love that picture of the power of short bear selling. So, I want to do a trade with you. Can only be executed in a margin account regarding short margin trading activity with marginable securities. Are you with me so far? Yes. Securities that have the capacity to be covered. Are you with me? Yes. Client sells short a round lot on XYZ stock at 60 a share to the open market. Borrows the stock. Are you with me so far? Yes. The short market value here is the dollar value of the stock sold short. $6,000 represented by the sale of, on a short side, 100 shares of stock at 60 a share. That's the stock component. There are many similarities on the short side to the long side. When your client borrowed stock to buy, borrow money to buy stock on the long side, he had to deposit 50% of the market value. You always have to deposit, either the long side or the short side, 50% of the stock component in TD5. The stock component is $6,000, represented by the shorting of a round lot at 60 a share. Your client has to deposit 50% of the SMV, just like he deposited 50% of the LMV. Depositing 50% of the stock component. So your client deposits $3,000, 50% of the short market value of six. And I want you to really take a closer look as to what's going on here. All of this money is coming into the account. Are you with me so far? Yes. Watch what's happening. When your client shorts 100 shares of stock at 60 a share, it generates $6,000 in short sale proceeds. That money is coming into the account. What else is coming into the account? His deposit of, and the amount of money in equity, 50% of the short market value, which is $3,000. All of this money coming into the account establishes a component on the short side only called the credit balance. I told you earlier, hours earlier, the credit balance is money in the account. A debit balance is the amount of money he owes. Why is the credit balance $9,000? What does it consist of? 100% of the short market value, $6,000, plus Reg T, 50% of SMV equals CR. All of this money coming into the account, credit into the account. Are you with me so far? Yes. So what is the credit balance? It is the short market value plus the client's margin deposit on the short market value. All this money, $9,000 coming into the account. Now, how do we find and compute equity on the short side? CR minus SMV is equal to E. Seven. CR minus SMV is equal to E. Seven. Take the credit balance, subtract the short market value, that will equal equity on the short side. How do we find equity on the long side? LMV minus DR is equal to E. How do we find equity on the short side? CR minus SMV is equal to E. Now, more similarities uh, to the long side with the short side. The actual amount of money in equity you have in the account, are you with me so far? Yes. Is always required to be on the long side of the short side, 50% of the stock component. That defines required equity. 50% of the LMV or 50% of the SMV. What is required here? $3,000. What do you actually have? $3,000. This account is in required equity. Are you with me so far? Yes. Now, why'd you short the stock? You, it was going down. you hope it's going down. Are you with me so far? Yes. Okay, you're right. This stock goes down 10 points from 60 a share to 50 a share. How many shares sold short in the position? Wow. Round lot. It's okay, you can say 100, I'll say a round lot. Are you with me so far? It means the same thing. Now look at your short market value. It's declined to $5,000 from six. Increases or decreases in the short market value don't affect the credit balance. The credit balance, like the debit balance on the long side, is constant. The credit balance only moves when you short more new stock and that money is added to the margin account. Are you with me so far? Yes. We're not shorting any more new stock. All that happened here was the stock price went down. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Any price that that stock is trading below 60 a share, you have the capacity to cover. You're going to make money. Are you with me so far? Yeah. So we hope that the strategy is bearish, and the strategy is bearish shows the stock price depressed. Based upon the same credit balance, constant, and the decline to the short market value of 100 shares, open, short interest, shares that have not been covered, is now trading at 50 a share, 
Can you find new equity on the short side? Sure. CR minus S&V is equal to E. What's E? What's required equity? Always cut the market value in half. The market value is a short market value. What's required? Twenty-five hundred. What do you actually have? Four thousand. What do you have excess? Fifteen hundred dollars. Where would you like to credit the fifteen hundred dollars to? If you take the fifteen hundred dollars and credit it to the SMA account and multiply it times two, what do you got? Three thousand dollars of what? Say it again. I want it a little bit louder. It's not buying power. You're thinking like a robot. It's short selling power. You're on the wrong side. Your language is on the wrong side. We're not on the long side. That's not buying power. That's short selling power. The ability for your client to play greater, better strategies, to short three more thousand dollars worth of new stock. $1,500 of excess equity in the SMA account. Watch the side you're on. Watch your language. Are you with me? Yes. The normal reaction is buying power because you're not thinking. Are you with me? Yes. You're on the short side. Well, you know what NASDAQ wants you to do, don't you? Well, if you don't, let me tell you what we've been doing, what they want you to do, transact. They want you to use your short selling power that you eloquently called buying power. Are you with me so far? Yes. Short three more thousand dollars worth of new stock, play greater bearish strategy transactions. Are you with me so far? Yes. yes. And find adjusted equity. Okay. So here's your margin account. You've got a credit balance of $9,000. You've got a short market value decline to $5,000. Equity is increasing because you're making money because when stock prices go down, equity goes up because the relationship between the short market value and equity on the short side, series 7, is inverse. The relationship between the long market value and equity on the long side is parallel. Move yourself in the right direction. Based upon which way equity is moving, you'll always be correct. Are you with me so far? Yes. When short market value goes down, equity goes up. You're making money. You want stock prices to go down to be able to cover in the money. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Okay, don't nod to me. I want you to answer me. Okay, so um, they want you to use your short selling power, $3,000. They want you to short three more thousand dollars worth of new stock and find that number. Okay, let's see what happens to the margin account when you short three more thousand dollars worth of new stock. The three thousand dollars in short sale proceeds is coming into the account. Am I right? Yes. Added to the credit balance. Am I right? Yes. Nine plus your short selling power of three gives you a new credit balance of? Are you shorting more new stocks? Say yes. yes. Which one of these three is the stock component? Right there. You're shorting three more thousand dollars worth of new stock. Your short market value is going to go up by your short selling power amount. Five plus three is equal to a short market value of? Eight thousand. CR minus SMV is equal to E. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. This constant equity of four is 50% of the new short market value of eight. After your short selling power of $3,000 has been utilized, the account went from excess equity back to required equity, and everything is jake. That means good. Are you with me so far? Yes. So we're already transacting, and we see the effect that short selling power has on the equity in the account. And what is the effect? When you use Series 7 short selling power, are you with me so far? Yes. Step one, your credit balance goes up by the short selling power amount because that money is being added into the account. Are you with me so far? Yes. Your short market value goes up by the short selling power amount because you're shorting more new stock, and that's the stock component. Step two, look at equity. Equity stayed constant. Are you with me so far? Set. Don't forget it. Well, a couple of rules on the short side that are a little bit different than the rules on the long side. We said that on the long side, when your client opens up a new margin account, he had to deposit the greater of either the industry's requirement or the Fed. Are you with me so far? Not so on the short side. It is a flat Series 7, $2,000, which is the client's minimum initial margin deposit for new accounts. Whether the $2,000 is more or less than 50% of the short market value is irrelevant. It's a flat base dollar amount of money. You with me so far? Yes. When your client has opened up the margin account, the equity on the short side has to be maintained at a certain minimum level at all times, just like the equity on the long side. Are you with me so far? Yes. The maintenance for equity is always a percentage of the stock component. Everything is a percentage of the stock component. Are you with me so far? Yes. And so, on the long side, equity was required to be no less than 25% of the market value, whatever that market value might be. Are you with me so far? Yes. On the long side, we want 5% more because we feel short and margin trading is a little bit more speculative in the borrowing of stock than the borrowing of money. And so therefore, the maintenance for equity on the short side is equity is never far below 30% of the short market value. Are you so far? Yes. So we asked a greater question. When does equity fall? We're worried about equity falling and along the short side. And on the short side, equity falls. Are you with me so far? 
when stock prices go which way? Uh, we don't want stock prices to go up on the short side. On the short price side, we're playing the bearish strategy. We want stock prices to go down to be able to cover below the price that the stock sold short. So when stock prices rise, the strategy is reversing on us. The bear runs for cover. It's a bull stampede. Equity goes down because SMV and equity move inverse. Am I right? Look at me. Well, how high can the short market value rise to that will inversely take down equity to maintenance? Credit balance times 10 thirteenths will establish a new high for the short market value that will inversely take down equity exactly to maintenance. And if your client experiences a market value on the short market, market, market value account, are you with me so far, any higher than credit balance times 10 thirteenths, the equity is going to crack through maintenance. You're going to give them what kind of a call? Let's take a maintenance call, man on demand. Let's take a look at maintenance right now. I give you the client's margin account on the short side. Take a look at the trade. We have a credit balance of $9,000. We have a short market value of $6,000. We have equity of $3,000, and we will begin with required equity. Now, what did I tell you? I said if you take your client's credit balance, which is how much, and multiply the credit balance times 10 thirteenths, that's going to establish what? That's going to establish a new high for the short market value, which is going to do what to equity? Inversely take it down exactly to maintenance. Are you with me so far? Yes. Look at me. Look at me, $9,000 times 10 thirteenths equals 6,923. So what I'm telling you is, by the way, increases or decreases in the short market value don't affect the credit balance. Credit balance is still $9,000. Look up. I need you looking up right now. Right now is the point. So if he gains a $923 increase in market value in his account from 6,000 to 6,923, Based upon CR minus S and V is equal to E, which is 9,000 minus 6,923, gives us equity of 2,077. 2,077 is exactly 30% of 6,923. He's exactly at maintenance right now. But if the stock component goes any higher in value than $923, then by $923, it, it goes higher than 6923 the equity in the account inversely will go down and crack through maintenance. You're going to give them a maintenance call, man on demand. Are you with me so far? Yes. So that's a little bit about maintenance on the short side, 30% of the short market value. How do we know uh, how high the stock price can rise that will inversely take down equity to maintenance? Credit balance times 10 thirteenths will establish the maintenance requirement for equity. But you know, oh, there's always a you know. I mean, if it's an education, it's continuous and ongoing. It will never stop. Are you with me so far? Yes. Just so you know, not even after your license will it stop. And that's the beautiful part about the education of this current event global industry. I want to talk to you about those three questions that are on NASDAQ related to margin account information. We said, although different, they always surround the most important and powerful concept associated with margin trading. And that is, every one of those three questions has some kind of relevance to equity. Are you with me so far? Yes. I mean, one of those three questions is either about long buying power, short selling power, or same day substitution, and you won't be able to answer any of those three questions unless you understand the status and the level of equity, whether it's at required state, excess state, or in restriction, and it's all based upon understanding the first question is, uh, is the actual equity account 50% of the LMV or the SMV, because that determines whether the account might experience excess equity or required equity, at least so far. Well, one of those three questions, however, is a classic. On NASDAQ, associated with margin account formation, they're going to give you long margin trading activity, short margin trading activity in that question. Are you going to be so far? Existing SMA that can be either long buying power, short selling power, whole host of information that we're going through. And then the three questions that follow, are you with me so far? I got to tell you, are you with me so far? Yes. One of those three questions is going to sound really simple. Related to the following margin account information, what is the equity in the account? an account that has both long and short margin trading activity. Now before we talk about the equity in this overall margin account, there's a word that's not in that question that we don't need, that's automatically assumed. And that is, what is the combined level for equity in this one overall margin account? And what that means is this, if on Monday you're engaging in long margin trading activity and then the following week later your client wants to short some stock in a margin account, you with me so far? Yeah. You're not going to open up another margin account on the short side. Coming out of the same margin account is both long and short margin trading activity. Are you with me so far? Yeah. It's one margin account. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Therefore, if we're dealing with one margin account that are executing to the open market long and short margin trading activity, we must be mathematically and definitively coming down to dealing with one level for equity for this one margin account. Am I right? Yes. Now look. 
There is a formula that you know I'm referring to right now that is used to compute and find combined equity. I want you to take a look at this formula. It's staggering, and I'm going to tell you why. You're on NASDAQ. You're at 40 Rector. You're taking this examination. Here comes the margin account question with a series of three following in succession. Are you with me so far? Yes. One of those three is a simple question related to a significant amount of margin account information. What is the equity in this account? You know it means combined. All of a sudden, you're going to show this mathematical prowess. I can't believe I'm even saying this. And you're going to say, oh, yeah. LMV plus CR minus DR minus SMV is equal to overall combined A. Look at me. You don't really think you're going to pull that number out of a hat like David Copperfield, do you? Forget it. Not on that day. Now, let's assume that you did know that formula. To find and compute combined equity. That formula will not be used by you to find combined equity. Yes, that formula will give you combined equity. Are you with me so far? Yes. But that formula is very dangerous, and I'm going to tell you why it's dangerous and why you're not going to use it, and how we will find combined equity in a moment. Because the seven is really in effect, if you use that formula setting you up for the other two questions out of the series of three that are coming, it has nothing to do with combined equities question. Let me show you what I mean. You see, when they give you margin of account information on NASDAQ, I'm going to take you to a higher level in this examination right now, a level that most people don't know. So if I were you, I'd watch this. One of those three questions is going to relate it to the overall equity in the account. Another question is going to relate it to the short side. Another question is going to be related to the long side. Are you with me so far? Yes. Now, if you use that formula to find combined equity, that formula will find combined equity. But it's going to leave you naked and isolated when it comes to the other two questions where you're going to have to rework to find the answer to the question for the long side and the short side. We'll find combined equity in a different way, and I'll tell you why. You won't be naked and abandoned when it comes to the other two questions. And I'll show you exactly what that means. Do you know how to find and combine equity on the long side? Can you tell me how to compute and find equity on the long side? Isn't it LMV? Minus dr is equal to e, say yes. yes. Can you tell me how to find equity on the short side and compute it? Isn't it cr minus smv equal to e? And therefore, what we've done here is what we've been doing. Finding equity on the individual signs relative to their computation. And because then e plus e must be combined e. Agree? Yes. Now, the reason why we'll find combined equity on what is known as a segregated account basis, which is to segregate from the account information the long side from the short side, rather than utilizing the formula, is when we get the answer to 28, which is combined equity, are you with me so far? Yes. Which is E plus E. When we look at 29 and 30, let me show you what I mean by not being naked that the formula will uh, provide you with. 29 is going to be related to the long side, which you'll be able to clearly see. 30 will be related to the short side, which you're able to clearly see. So by segregating the accounts and finding combined equity on a segregated account basis, rather than utilizing the formula, you'll be able to see the long and the short side to preempt what 29 and 30 would be, which in effect means that you would be in effect setting up the 7 rather than the 7 setting you up. And I get chills when I say that because I'm just going to show you exactly what that means. To talk about and being in a training program where you'll be able to set the 7 up rather than the 7 setting you up is uh, magnificent to itself, and that gives you the competitive edge over NASDAQ, which is what I have. Are you with me? And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that right now. Let's take a look at finding combined equity on a segregated account basis, and then I will show you where the material stop, where the other two questions could possibly be out of a series of three to show you how we can preempt those questions and really set the seven up so the seven doesn't set you up. And I'm referring to the information uh, right under the top of the first box. Are you with me? Take a look at it. A customer has a margin of account with a long market value of $15,000 and a debit balance of $8,000. So let's take a look right now. You're on NASDAQ right now. Are you with me so far? Yes. And the long market value is $15,000. We have a debit balance of eight. So equity on the long side is seven. Are you with me so far? Yes. We have a credit balance of $10,000. Are you with me so far? Yes. We have a short market value of $4,000. Am I right? Yes. We have equity of 6000 I ask you to go for question number 28, just to use my example. Question number 28 is what is the equity in the account? 
Therefore, E plus E is combined E, and the answer, of course, is that 28 is $13,000. You're on your way. 29 is related to the long side, and 30 is related to the short side. Let's see what NASDAQ has waiting for us. The materials have stopped. NASDAQ is going over for the Series 7 to another level. 29 is related to the long side of 15, 8, and 7. Are you with me so far? What can you tell me about an account on the long side with a market value of $15,000? Debit balance of 8 and equity of 7. Go! Can't hear you. No, that's not quite it. Well, what you want to say is that the account is in restriction for equity by $500. That's not what you said. You said margin requirement. I didn't cut you off. I thought I heard a final point. I'm sorry if you thought I did. I would never steal your thunder. Uh, but it has nothing to do with the margin requirement. It's got to do with the level for equity in the account relative to the market value, not a margin requirement deposit because we're not doing a transaction. And therefore, if you cut the market value in half to 7,500, that's required. You have 7,000. This account on the long side is in restriction. The formula will not show you that. Are you with me so far? Yeah. That's what I mean by preempting what 29 would be and what 30 would be. Would be. Now, let me tell you what 29 is going to be because I'm telling you what 29 is going to be on NASDAQ. On September 29th of 2009, Mr. Johnson contacted the account executive for the execution of the purchase of 500 shares of GE and the sale of 350 shares of XYZ stock in his existing long margin account. The following is the margin deposit of this transaction. What is that known as? What's 29 going to be? I see two trades in the question done on the same day on the long side and the account is a restriction. What's that going to be? They're going to throw in the same day substitution right there. Are you with me so far? Yes. So you know it right away. Are you with me? Yes. You with me? Yes. See what's happening here? Now, let's take a look at 30. 30 is related to the short side that you could never see without segregating the account from the formula of an account the credit balance of 10, short market value of 4, and equity is 6. Well, can you tell me about the short margin account? Uh, what did you say? It's ex SX equity, how much? $1,000. Incorrect, sir. It's got nothing to do with short. Your number has nothing to do with short. We're on the short side. Your number of excess equity of $1,000 is incorrect, sir. Say it again. Stop. Time out. Say it again. Cut the market value in half. What's the market value for? What's required? Two. What do you have? Six. Your excess equity is? Credited to where? Double it and what do you got? Make the same mistake twice and you'll see what happens today. Short selling power, how much? $8,000 in short selling power. You start out with excess equity of $1,000 in short selling power or two, you're already gone. Are you with me so far? Watch your math. Cut the market value in half first. That determines required equity relative to what you actually have. Determine whether you're in excess or not. Am I, are you with me so far? Yes. If required equity is two, you got six. Your excess is four. Credited to SMA. 8,000 is short selling power. Watch the question. Are you ready for question number 30? Yes or no? Yes. Use your short selling power. They're not telling you it's eight. You got to know it's eight. Short eight more thousand dollars worth of new stock and find overall equity in this overall margin account. What's your answer? 13. Correct. It's unchanged. Here's why. When you short eight more thousand dollars worth of new stock, the eight thousand dollars in short sales added to the credit balance. Am I right? Was 10, it's now 18. You shorting more new stock? Say yes. yes. How much more new stock? 8,000 worth of new stock. That's the stock component. 8 plus 4 is 12. CR minus S and V is constant E on the short side. The question was combined. The answer is 13 again because you know when you use short selling power or when the credit balance and the short market value go up at the short selling power amount, equity stays home. Set! The end of margin. The end of day one of the beginning of week two and it's only going to steamroll like this. Now listen to me. I want to talk to you about um, a transactional question, but when we do, we're going to come back in five minutes because I'm going to do a trade with you because I want your education to be much more powerful than you think. We'll allow the crash review to come on back on Wednesday and get themselves ready. In five minutes, we're going to trade. I'll see you in five.